Dr. Pettis, uh, most of my questions will, will be for you as the um, uh, as lead researcher for the USDA with regard to this issue. And uh, our other witnesses' statements, both written and uh, oral, uh, suggest that the Varroa mite is the single most detrimental problem affecting honeybee health. Uh, do you agree with that and that the research uh, on this pesticide is likely the, the task at hand, if you will, that we should address for the, the honeybees? Very good question. Um, I would say that the varroa mite, if you had to single out one single individual factor in bee health, was the one thing that if we could eliminate it, uh, it would have a big impact. I will say there's a, a lot of confusion about what colony collapse disorder is. It gets mentioned by the media, and the media loves it. We defined colony collapse disorder as the absence of varroa, the absence of damaging levels of varroa. So we don't think that Varroa mites have much of anything to do with colony collapse disorder, at least not directly. Mm. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, again, a mixed bag. If we had to single out one thing, varroa mite would certainly probably be it, but it's certainly not the only thing going on in bee health. And, and this gets to your, uh, I think, some of your previous indications. There, there's some constituencies uh, that want to place the blame uh, squarely on pesticides, uh, particularly uh, the neonicotinoids for, for honeybee colony loss. Uh, in Australia, uh, neonicotinoids are, are registered just as they are in the United States as a seed treatment. Uh, beekeepers don't experience the losses that we have here in uh, North America uh, as, as well as Europe. Uh, the varroa mite it, is not in Australia, is that correct? Correct. So, so just by definition, if we're making decisions based on the facts, uh, without the mite problem, growers in Australia don't have the same impact. I think other places around the globe, the beekeepers have not suffered as they have in the U.S. The U.S. beekeepers have suffered higher losses, although Europe has also suffered some fairly high losses if, when we look at winter losses. Australia is the only exception that doesn't have varroa. So around the globe, where honeybees are managed, varro um, Australia is the only continent that does not have varroa. Okay. So we're seeing this in South America and, and other, other continents. Varroa is widespread everywhere else in the world. Uh, the U.S. EPA is involved in ongoing litigation uh, regarding the registration of several neonicotinoid pesticides. Uh, with the, the data from Australia, uh, these pesticides are being used in Australia, is, is my understanding. Uh, is it fair to suggest that regulatory agencies uh, would be ill-advised to oversimplify this problem and take an action against pesticides uh, without the, the proper science and considering the other factors in, involved in this issue? Well, Chairman Scott, I'd like to remind you that I'm from the USDA and not from EPA, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, um, That's why you're here. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, because, you're, you know, we don't allow the EPA. To, right. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I, think, I think the level of agriculture in Australia, I'm actually fairly familiar with the, ag the uh, beekeeping in Australia, mm -hmm. and the level of agriculture is not what it is in the U.S. We have, we have a much more advanced uh, agricultural system, much, uh, much more agriculture going on here. Um, I think the reason the neonicotinoid group gets mentioned a lot is the fact that it represents a new exposure to pollinators. And that is it, it's moving systemically in the plant, and it can be found in nectar and pollen, unlike more traditional pesticides. But we still have issues with, you know, exposure in, in those realms as well. So I, I, don't, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, other than that the neonic raises a new level because of the exposure route. Well, th thank you for answering those questions. And again, we, we need to resolve this issue. It's extremely important to uh, the United States and, and, as well as many other continents and, and countries. And uh, we just need to make sure we take a fact-based approach and, uh, and, and resolve this based on the science and, and not emotion. Mr. Schrader?